Live from Peoria, welcome to Sports Channel's coverage of the Class A Basketball Championships of the IHSA, sponsored in part by Country Companies Insurance. When it matters most, the country's behind you, and by Pepsi. Nothing else is a Pepsi. When you come from a small town, maybe everybody in the town gets a chance to come to Peoria for the state championship tournament. In this case, it's Williamsfield. And everyone in the town who could come is here because their bombers will take on St. Francis de Sales this evening in quarterfinal game number three here in Peoria. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom Dore. David Kaplan is alongside Cappy. We start with St. Francis de Sales, a team with two really good players led by Jimmy Mack. All right, Jimmy Mack's a prime time guard, Tom. He'll have huge defensive responsibilities today, but he's also going to have to knock down perimeter shots to open things up inside for his running buddy, Sean Lampley, a guy who's headed to the University of California, Berkeley next year. Very good player, but he missed 19 games with injuries. On the other side, Williamsfield, or Bill Town, as they call it, Travis Lewis is a high-scoring guard for them. They play hard and they play fast. Travis Lewis is one of the highest-scoring guards in the country. Over 30 points per game. As he goes, his bombers will go. But also Troy Endress inside, a 6'2 junior, is going to have to step up and play much bigger than his re regular size. It is a fun day today and tomorrow here in Peoria as the Class A champion will be crowned tomorrow night. We're working up toward that as this is quarterfinal game number three. We'll take a break. When we come back, Eric Collins will join us and continue pregame show activities from Peoria. Folks, welcome back to Carver Arena. We're getting ready for quarterfinal number three. It'll be Chicago St. Francis de Sales taking on Williamsfield, the Bombers of Williamsfield. Now, folks, this is a classic example of David versus Goliath. Now, Williamsfield is going to try and play the David role and bring out the big slingshot. And I'll tell you, they have all of the prerequisites to be a David. Now, the motto for Williamsfield in 1997 is 97 for 97. They have 97 students enrolled in the entire school, and they're trying to win the state championship in 1997. Now, folks, they have 11 people on their team so far this season. They only have 11 because that's the only guys who went out for the team. If, they, if 12 people went out, they would have 12 people on the team. Obviously, no one is cut in a school so small. Now, folks, they have a huge contingent of fans here. As you can see, the people are here in mass. Williamsfield is only 30 minutes away. They sold out their allotment of 1,100 tickets within a couple of hours. They needed 400 more, so there's 1,500 tickets sold. So 15, uh, 1,500 Billtown fans are here. Remember, folks, it's important to consider that there's only 600 people in the entire town of Williamsfield. Now, they're going to need all the support they can get. Williamsfield usually only plays five guys. Sometimes they play six, but that doesn't mean they play a slowdown tactic at all. They play full court, intense, up-tempo defense the entire time. So, obviously, that requires a lot of conditioning, and these guys are in shape. Now, in Williamsfield, there are no fall sports. So, none of these guys played soccer. No one ran cross-country. No one played football. They were conditioning in hot August summers, trying to get ready for just this very moment. And so they are in great shape, and they'll run all up and down the floor all evening long. Now, of course, the big gun is Travis Lewis. Travis, second in the state in scoring, averaging over 30 points per game. He's joined by Troy Endress. He's the 6'2 center. He's the largest man on the Bombers squad. So not a lot of size and, of course, not a lot of depth. So it'll be a classic example of David and Goliath. It should be fun. This is exactly what makes state championship basketball so exciting. We'll take a small break right now. When we return, we'll bring it back to Dave Kaplan and Tom Dore, and they'll get us ready for tip-off. Now here's John Muzak with the Star Spangled Banner. By the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner
music. Now let's get the introductions of both teams with that. Here's our public address announcer, Paul Herzog. And now basketball hands on behalf of the Illinois High School Association and the city of Peoria. Welcome to America's original March Madness. Tonight's quarterfinal game in Carver Arena features the Chicago St. Francis de Sales Pioneers with a record of 15 and 14 and the Williamsfield Bombers a record of 28 and 2. Let's meet the reserves for each team. For St. Francis de Sales, 5'9 junior number 3, Andre Jean. 5'9", junior number 12, Aaron Garcia. A six-foot senior, number 15, Sam Yarbrough. A 6'1", sophomore, number 21, Jarrell Parker. A 6'5", junior, number 30, Lorenzo Trudeau. A 6'4", junior, number 42, Leroy Thompson. A 6'1", sophomore, number 44, Ryan Geldmeyer. A 6'5", junior, number 50, Matt Balzer. And a 6'5", sophomore, number 54, Jason Vasquez. That's the reserves of the Pioneers of St. Francis de Sales. And now the reserves for the Bombers of Williamsfield. 5'8", freshman, number 12, Reggie Bowman. A 5'7", junior, number 30, Dan Brown. 5'10", freshman, number 32, Seth Smith. A 5'4", sophomore, number 34, Dusty Gray. A 6'1", junior, number 40, Neil Smith. And a 6'1", sophomore, number 50, Grant Strom. And now the starting lineups for tonight's quarterfinal game. At a forward, St. Francis with the sale, the 6'2 junior, number 32, Emery Moore. At a forward for Williamsfield, number 23 of 5'11 junior, Brett Tucker. The other pioneer forward, the 6'1 senior, number 34, Marcus Walthall. The other forward for the Bombers, a six-foot senior, number 35, Andrew Gibbs. At center for St. Francis de Sales, a six-six senior, 33, Sean Lampley. And at center for Williamsfield, a six-two junior, 45, Troy Endress. At a guard for the Pioneers, a five-eight senior, number 20, Wendell Ewing. And a guard for the Bombers, 5'9", senior number 20, Josh Engel. The other St. Francis guard, a 5'10", junior number 24, Jimmy Mack. And the other guard for Williamsville, a 6'0", senior number 33, Travis Lewis. The coaching staff for Chicago St. Francis, the assistant coaches, Tim Moore, Jim Kelly, and Tony Michalski, the head coach in his eighth season at Chicago St. Francis. Eric Collins is standing by now. Eric, what's happening? Well, Tom, obviously the big story for St. Francis uh, de Sales is Sean Lampley. Sean's been back uh, for the past 10 games, but the biggest uh, contribution has been in the tournament. In the last six games of the tournament, he's averaged 19 points and 12 boards. But I had a chance to talk to head coach Larry Moore. He said that Sean has come down with a little bit of a sore throat and that he's going to have to monitor his minutes. So obviously, that could play a huge role in tonight's matchup. Tommy, back to you. All right, thanks, Eric. Let's take a look at our country company's insurance starting lineup for Larry Moore of 138 wins. He's got Ewing and Mack in the backcourt. Moore, Lampley, and Waldo are his forwards. On the other side, for Williamsfield, Engel and Lewis, the guards, Tucker and Gibbs, the forwards, and Endress is the center. And, Cappy, you know, we talked about how just about everybody from Williamsfield is here. They're excited to be here. They're pleased. But not quite everybody has made it here, have they? As you see our officials, Ray Albert and Gary Trout. No, the mid-century telephone people have set up 
the feet of this game at the firehouse. They've got the popcorn popper from the Summer Baseball League. A bunch of the businesses in town have donated food and drinks. So everybody sitting at the firehouse, give a big cheer for your Williams Field Bombers because state tournament action is underway right now. And they are here and ready to play. St. Francis wins the tap. And immediately throws it away, looking for Jimmy Mack. Wendell Ewing threw it out of bounds. Now let's see what St. Francis does. It looks like they're going to come up and put some pressure on right away. Well, I talked with their coaches yesterday, and they told me, hey, in oh, no uncertain terms, we are going to play 94 feet for 32 minutes. That's Travis Lewis. He goes right side for Josh Ingle. Baseline jumper right side is good for Troy Andrews. Now, Andrews the guy that can shoot the ball and will shoot it for this team. The big difference, though, has got to be Sean Lampley. Jumper from 15, back of the rim, no good. Williams Field pulls down the rebound. Travis Lewis, their guard, high-scoring guard, forward, whatever you want to call him. Right there he is. Well, much like we saw in the first game today with Spring Valley Hall. Brett Tucker with the three. It's important for St. Francis de Sales to understand their size and strength advantage and utilize it rather than getting to the first good perimeter look, dive the ball down to the block. They almost turned it over again. Wendell Ewing brings it across and calls out the play. You would think they'd want to go right inside. High arcing three is good. Top of the circle from Jimmy Mack. Now he also a high scoring guard. We talked on the other end about Travis Lewis. Jimmy Mack can fill it up as well. 14 points a game, plus he's one of the primary ball handlers. Blocking foul will be called on Wendell Ewing of St. Francis. That's his first. Jimmy Mack, 5'10 junior, 14 points per game. Very quick, very explosive when he gets into the lane. And that helps create opportunities for Sean Lampley, plus spotted up perimeter shooters. Aaron Garcia and Jarrell Parker check into the lineup for St. Francis. And the ball is dribbled out of bounds by Travis Lewis. It'll belong to St. Francis to Sales. I look for St. Francis to Sales to do a lot in a zone concept. One, two, two, a little bit of two, three. And a holding foul will go against St. Francis. We'll get the number. Emery Moore they're going to get caught on the backside. And that that occurred Tom because you have to work harder to get good defensive position. You can't be content with reaching around. Ball tapped out of bounds. And Coach Robert Anderson says keep the ball out of the corner. They'll trap us down. There. Looking for the inbound. They're having a little trouble getting the ball in bounds the early going. Ball loose and taken away, and here comes St. Francis. Length of the floor with the layup, and that one's good. Jimmy Mack with the layup. St. Francis to Sales, a very quick team who recognizes the transition from defense to offense as well as any team in this Elite Eight field. Nice move inside. The ball tapped out of bounds will belong to Williams Field. Five to five. Six minutes, five seconds left here in the first period. The sales doing a great job defensively. Push it up the floor. The lay-in is good, and the foul will be called. Jarrell Parker. Wait a minute. The foul call a travel before the foul. There goes the steal. Look down the floor. Very good job on recognition again. Tough to tell. On the other end, the ball is thrown away, so it'll be St. Francis ball with 5.49 left in the first quarter. Tied at five. See the turnovers early going. There's Parker with it on the way. Own look out of the bombers of Williamsfield. Almost all oh, great defensive play. That's tremendous at the other end. The fake and the foul. Oh no, traveling call. 
traveling call. That's twice I thought a foul was called. What hustle. Great hustle. Travis Lewis not only helps come up with the steal, but finds the presence of mind to get the ball down the floor. Jimmy Mack, I think, is the yeah. player that is down for St. Francis, and he is in some pain. Caps, this did obviously be quite a loss for this ball club. Jimmy Mack has put up big time numbers for his team. Maybe we can see what happens to him, David. Looks like they're working on his shin, maybe. Well, here comes the dribble drive. Now you know there's going to be contact, and that's an excellent call by the official. And there's and Jimmy Mack at the bottom of your screen. It looks like he skidded and may have rolled an ankle. Right ankle or left ankle is what they're. Yeah, there you go. As he's helped off. Now the important thing is when you have an ankle, as soon as they determine that they're that it's a sprain and nothing more severe, if you sit and it stiffens up and swells up, you have a big problem. They try and keep the the foot elevated, keep the swelling down, and then try and keep you moving a little bit. Quick pass goes inside, shot off the glass and good. Marcus Waldo puts that one in. And it's seven to five now. A reach in foul is called. Jarrell Parker was shaking his head and saying, Yep, I got it. When you try and attack pressure, and here comes the situation where we're going to see the, the foul and the contact. When you try and attack pressure, especially a quick team like St. Francis, when you attack their defense, you need to pass the basketball through pressure and attack the goal to score, not dribble through it. Jumper from the left side rolls in for Andrew Gibbs, his first points, and we're tied again at seven. A blocking foul called. Travis Lewis called for the foul. And we got a break time. 445 left first quarter, and we're tied at seven between St. Francis and Williamsfield. The broadcast rights for the Illinois High School Association Boys Class A Basketball Championships have been granted to Sports Channel and Intersport Television by the IHSA. Any reproduction of this game without the express written consent of Sports Channel, Intersport Television, and the IHSA is prohibited. St. Francis, two of three from the field, including a three pointer. Williamsfield, two of three, and a three pointer. So you get a tie game, right? When we look at the styles of play, forgetting about the depth on one bench as opposed to the lack of depth on the Williamsfield bench, you see the same style of play at both ends of the floor. Parker with the three makes it 10 7 now. Very dangerous passes. And finally, there's one picked off by Moore. He'll penetrate, stop for 12, miss it, and the rebound pulled down by Travis Lewis. They've done a great job on Lewis so far, but there's a holding call. Aaron Garcia called for the foul. Garcia, 5'9", junior, his first. In talking with the St. Francis coaches, you get a look at Larry Moore there. He said, we are going to try and attack the sidelines when we move up against the Bombers. We are not going to attack their press through the middle, which is what a, a lot of con conventional wisdom says. You attack a press through the middle, flash your big guy up, and try and throw over the top of it. So we're going to go up the sideline side and try to attack the basket to score. Lewis hit the bottom of the backboard with that one. Here comes Parker down the floor and lays it in. And so far, it has become a layup drill now for St. Francis. They lead it 12 to 7. He's got five. With the left hand, basket good and a foul call. Travis Lewis goes right to the basket. Real nice dribble drive. Now he knows contact is coming. Sean Lampley didn't want to pick up a foul on a shot block, but instead he picks it up with a real ticky tack foul. He didn't make a great effort defensively and still picked up the foul. See Lewis, pretty good free throw shooter. Missed that, and the loose ball picked up by Lewis. Good ball movement inside. Lewis goes up and puts it in. He did that over Sean Lampley, the 6'6 forward. 
very quickly up the floor inside the basket will not fall but a couple free throws will come as Troy Endress will be called for the personal foul what St. Francis really doing a nice job at making the transition and pushing the tempo up the floor that's four straight possessions that they've had a layup or a foul opportunity at the basket in transition And that's a mindset that comes from your coach saying guys I am not going to allow the ball to come out of the net hit the floor pick it up take our time to get the ball inbounds. Larry Moore told his guys when that ball goes through the net when they score I want someone taking it out of the basket and in quickly so we can push and attack the sidelines. Miss both free throws still 12 to 11 St. Francis to sales with the lead. Good ball movement. Throw it inside. That's a tough spot for a center to catch it. That's Lewis in the lane. Tough fadeaway jumper. Travis Lewis didn't even think twice. He's got six and his team leads it by one. I'm surprised that Sean Lampley really hasn't touched the ball on offense yet. And it seems like he's been passive defensively. Yeah. He'll pass across the top. Parker for three missed that one and the rebound pulled down by Lewis fires it down the floor in transition that one was short fight for the rebound and traveling will be called the interesting thing that we're seeing here develop early with 243 left in the first quarter it's a much smaller team from Williamsfield a team that is an iron five type squad you've got the depth and the quickness of St. Francis de Sales yet you look at how Williamsfield's playing they're the ones attacking the basket to score and they're the ones that seem to be doing a much better job defensively and stepping up and sealing off on the glass Lampley was trying to check that uh, yeah Lampley was trying to post up there he is trying to post up Garcia puts up the three missed it rebound tap and finally pulled down again Endress is right there Lewis turnaround jumper off the glass wouldn't go rebound pulled down by Lampley. Boy the ball is flying all over when St. Francis has it. They really push it up the floor. Lampley wants it inside and a holding call will go on the inside. They'll call that an Andrew Gibbs. Now Gibbs a six foot forward against six six Sean Lampley. The other thing is the philosophy that they're showing right now Gibbs is playing behind defensively. You're going to pick up a lot of fouls when you try and reach around and prevent an entry pass. Rebound for. Here's the long pass. It was long enough to get to Lewis. Shake big move with the left hand had it blocked. Garcia comes away with it. St. Francis has an awful lot of athleticism. This is a, a very quick team. Boy, they move the ball well. Baseline jumper is good from the left side. Leroy Thompson with the jumper. St. Francis takes the lead back by one. That's his first basket. You're right, Tom. I really like how they're spacing on offenses here early in the way that they're unselfish and moving the basketball. Travis Lewis just turns and very calmly puts it in. On the other end, quick jumper won't fall. The pace of this game is up and down the floor. Ball is kicked to keep possession. There's your look inside at how they're defending Sean Lampley. You see the hole, the arm wrapped around him, doing his best to try and reach around. Lewis for three. Couldn't get it, and Lampley right there with a the rebound. They're going to have to make a decision and decide to guard him half man around and really get up and get a hand into the passing lane to discourage an easy entry pass to a much bigger, better athlete inside in terms of Lampley. Bring it back out. 35 seconds left. Garcia from 15 short. Lewis with a rebound. Lewis brings it right down goes in between everybody right to the basket. This is the guy with the scorers mentality. He gets anywhere within 20 feet of the basket. He's thinking I'm getting my shot now. 
one of those guys that says the basket's the open man and as well as he can shoot it he's not far from wrong. Parker grows across the top to Garcia nine seconds left in the quarter. They got to get a shot off now three seconds two seconds one second they will not get a shot off. St. Francis did not realize that the clock was winding down at the end of the first quarter. We played one period here in Peoria and our first quarter score has Williamsfield leading St. Francis 17 to 14. St. Francis leads it or check that uh, Williamsfield leads it after one quarter. Let's go to Eric. Go ahead. Thanks Tom. We just had a word from Jimmy Mack. Uh, he has a sprained left ankle. Uh, they put a little extra tape on it and he's out now walking around doing a little light jogging trying to see if he's a go. Now it's going to be his decision whether he gets back into the game not Larry Moore. It's whether Jimmy feels like he can get back in. That's going to be the deciding factor. Tom back to you. St. Francis 6 of 13 from the field. Williams field with that one now 9 of 15. Travis Lewis is going to strap this town on his back oh. and say I'm taking you to the next game. I really like how this kid plays. He is a competitor. Offensive foul call. Leroy Thompson called for throwing the elbow. That was a good call inside the official right on top of it. Leroy Thompson tried to use his elbow to get position down on the low post. Officials right on top and here comes the entry pass and boom. You see the elbow right into the chest of Andrew Gibbs and the official makes a call. Good call. Get a look at Larry Moore. Done an excellent job at St. Francis. Lewis inside. Nice entry pass off the glass. Counted for Troy Endres. When you're expecting him to shoot it every time and he makes a pass like that, it's tough to guard. Endres with four now. There's the lob pass inside to Lampley as he puts it up and in and can't be as easy as that was. You've got to think right now without Jimmy Mack especially every time he's got to touch the ball. And they built it almost a virtual town around there were four white shirts and Lampley went around all four up on the glass and scored it. Great fake by Lewis. Holy cow. Oh, this kid is opening eyes all over the state of Illinois. And Larry Morris says, give me a timeout. He's going to challenge his guys and say, guys, somebody's got to take responsibility for a primetime player like Travis Lewis. 23-16, William Field leads it here in Peoria. 23-16. Let's take a look at this move by Lewis, Kathy. Look at that ball fake. Everybody thinks he's going to pass it, and he attacks the bigger, quicker team with a finger roll. Tell you what, that kid can play. Oh, there is no question. As you said, he's a competitor. 23-16 now. Williams Field with the lead. Parker already has a three. Sean Lampley trying to get the ball, couldn't do it. He's posting up inside, asking for the ball. Good ball movement now. Give it back to Lewis. Corner Gibbs on the dribble finds Lewis and a foul will be called. I think Jarrell Parker will be called for the push. The key to the whole thing is Travis Lewis never stops moving without the basketball. He's always on the move, and that's what sets up foul situations. That's what allows him to get the ball in the scoring area. His guys know when he catches the ball, he's thinking. Shot, shot, and if a guy's open, he'll dish inside for a better look. That's what makes him such a good player. Look at those numbers in 11 minutes. Jimmy Mack has checked back in for St. Francis. And Travis Lewis will go to the free throw line. Missed the front end of the one and one. He's about an 80% free throw shooter. Very quickly, Jarrell Parker brings it up. Mac 
Mack who gets it down to the corner. Zone look out of the Bombers of Williamsfield. They're going to have to really help inside. As you see, they triple the low post when Lampley catches it. He lost it, taken away. Lewis had it knocked loose and picked up. Hit it ahead, and Lampley lost it. I think he was thinking slam, David. He was thinking about throwing it down hard, and instead he didn't catch it. He was frustrated from having it stolen in the triple team the last time down the floor. And there he wanted to make amends and never caught the ball. Seven turnovers each. 23-16 our score. The Bombers of Williamsfield with the lead. Turnaround jumper goes high off the glass. Rebound pulled down by Waldo. St. Francis really hasn't got much going offensively right now. Everybody's standing around. They're not attacking the basket and using their size advantage. Mack put up the three. Lewis tries to answer at the other end. Double Thompson put it in. Hang in the air. He's almost like a running back, Tom. He goes down the floor as he sees a sliver of daylight. He kicks it into an extra gear and attacks the basket. David, he has tied St. Francis in scoring for the game. He has 16. St. Francis has 16. Top of the circle three is short. Rebound loose. Pulled down by Williamsfield. Here again comes Lewis. No look pass to the left side to Brent Tucker. He decides to hang on. Josh Engel has it on top. Into the corner. Baseline three too long. And the rebound pulled down by Marcus Walton. Parker in the lane puts it up and a blocking foul will be called on Brent Tucker. You're going to take the charge. You have to hold your ground. Tough to tell if he slid or not. Here comes the pass down the floor. Good job by, by St. Francis. And I don't know. Tough. Very tough call. That's the toughest call in basketball. Block charge. You get a split second to make a decision. I thought the toughest call was every time I was called for the foul. <laughs> there were a lot of them, too. I watched you play. You were a hack inside. I was good at it, too. Parker you were hits, the best. Parker hits <laughs> the first free throw. He's got six points. They were afraid of you in there. You had a great high school team. Oh, we had a lot of fun. East Leiden High School. You went to win 108 in a row in regular I don't, season. I don't know what it was. It was a lot. We didn't win the, the one would have counted, unfortunately. Lewis stops. Quick 15-footer is off. Rebound fought for and pushed ahead. Here comes Parker. Three on two break. Parker from 15 puts it in. Nice job to extend on the shot, follow through, and prevent the shot block. Really did a good job on a pull-up jumper in the lane. Jarrell Parker doing a nice job for his team. He's got nine of their 20 points. Pass goes inside. Hendricks kicks it on top. And a blocking foul will be called on Jimmy Mack. Let's not forget he may be half a step to a step slower. Sprained his ankle early in the game, was helped off the floor. They retaped it and he went back in. But that certainly got to be effect has to be affecting him as he tries to defend. Wendell Ewing comes back in. Jimmy Mack comes out. Let's see if they try and work on that ankle at all. Shaking his head. We'll have to see what's up. Josh Ingles, 63% free throw shooter. Can't make the front end of the one and one, and Lampley's right there for the rebound. St. Francis. Lob pass goes inside. Lampley stepped on the end line, out of bounds. It'll belong to the Bombers of Williamsfield. All right, now you're a big guy with this trivia about what the town was. I noticed that today. Where'd the nickname Bombers come from? Why don't you tell us? Because I know you did a lot of homework. Well, we'll get it from Eric in a minute. Eric 
Holland picked it up. I know he did. I'm confident that he studied today. <laughs> so, Dave, you don't know where the bombers came from, huh? Well, there he well, I is. didn't want to steal your thunder, Eric. Lewis can't get it. The rebound pulled down by Lampley. All right, go ahead, Eric. All right, 1943, they're thinking of a name. There's a slam at the other end for Emery Moore. They're thinking of a name in 1943. They put it up to a vote, and uh, the students decided that Bombers, in honor of uh, the World War II efforts, and uh, pay homage to the people who dropped the bombs over in Europe. So there you have the Bombers nickname. Eric, nice job doing your homework today. Yeah, I'm sorry sure. Dave didn't do it. I had looked up to him. How was the community developed? Where did the community come oh, from? Stop it. The community was developed by the Santa Fe Railroad. Bet you didn't know that. Great. Layup is counted for Emory Moore. He's got four points now. That dunk in the layup, so he's made a couple. And it's a one-point ball game. Great defense. Ewing trying to go coast to coast comes down and had it blocked, but a foul will be called. Josh Engel will pick up his first personal. Real good job to anticipate, get a hand up in the passing lane, and now it's just a foot race to the basket. Real nice job defensively. And there's the contact, and there's the foul. Ewing 20 of 33 from the free throw line on the season. 5 8 guard. Coach Moore was telling me he got a phone call the other day at school. And the person on the other end of the phone was calling from France and said, I'd like to talk to a couple of the ball players. Sean Lampley came out of class, as did Wendell Ewing, and they talked with Eric Anderson, former star at St. Francis de Sales, playing professionally now in France. And he said, Guys, I just called to tell you I'm going to be rooting for you from Europe. Make us proud. He, of course, helped lead his 88 team to second place in the class double A. Travis Lewis from the right side puts it in. A deuce from Lewis makes it 27 to 24. And is that a charge? It is offensive foul. A tremendous job to draw the charge, to stay out of the way when you know you're going to get hammered. But let's go a step farther. There's the charge. There's a great job by Travis Lewis. He's the guy that scored the basket at the other end, and then he hightailed it down to his defensive end of the floor. This guy's doing the whole deal. Passing, rebounds, taking charges, and he just happens to be scoring a few points as well. One minute left in the first half. It's a three-point ball game. Williams Field leads St. Francis to sale. Andrus puts it in with the left hand. A nice move on the inside. Troy Andrus with six points now. Parker comes back, tries to answer, and does. Jarrell Parker with the jumper. We've got a good back and forth game. 29 to 26. Parker with 11. And over and back call goes against Travis Lewis and the Bombers of Williamsfield. So now DeSales will have it with 35 seconds left. And here comes Travis Lewis. And that, I believe, was a very good call by the official because once three points touch in the front court, you cannot go into the back court. Tough to tell if his heel was on the line, but both feet were in the front court and the basketball had touched in the front court. Let's see if they try for a last shot of the half now. Williamsfield has really done a nice job of keeping Lampley out of the ballgame. He's posted up down low as they pick, play catch across the top. Ewing bounces it. Baseline shot goes up, no good. 12 seconds left. Lewis tries to drive through the pressure. Six seconds, five seconds, four. You know he'll take this shot. And the jump hook was no good. We played one half of basketball of quarterfinal number three here in Peoria. The home team on the scoreboard, the Bombers of Williamsfield, lead St. Francis de Sales, 29 to 26. Let's go over. Eric, you're standing by with the coach. Take it away. Yeah, thanks, Tom. We're here with Larry Moore, head coach of St. Francis de Sales. Larry, how happy are you with your team's performance in the first half? I thought we came out a little tentative. Uh, they broke us down uh, defensively. They got the ball in the middle. We didn't do a good job of covering that middle in our trap. 
But we're going to come out in the second half, and we're going to do a better job of covering that middle, and we're going to come at them. I don't think we had a real good first half, but, you know, we're, we're okay. We've been down before, but we're in, we'll be in good shape. How serious is Jimmy Mack's injury? He, he turned it over. Jimmy's a tough kid. He'll be back out to play. He'll be okay. And Sean, is the effects of his uh, sore throat, is that affecting his play? Uh, he, he's, he's not playing as hard as he's capable of playing, but uh, I think we'll, get, we'll make some adjustments in the second half, and we'll get back out here, and we'll get it done. Okay, Larry, thanks for talking to us. We wish you the best of luck in the second half. Larry Moore, the head coach of St. Francis de Sales. Tom, back to you. Thanks, Eric. And, you know, before the uh, start of this one, Eric Collins said this was the classic David against Goliath. St. Francis de Sales, the Chicago team, the big-time team, a lot of talent. Williams Field with slingshot, maybe out with a rock in it. I'm not so sure right now. 29-26 at halftime. We've got more activities coming up from Peoria right after these. Welcome back to Carver Arena. We're at halftime of the game between Williams Field and St. Francis de Sales. We're joined now by Ed Lewis. Ed's the father of Travis Lewis, the hero of half number one for Williams Field. You got to be a proud papa. Yeah, we're all we're all proud. I mean, Travis is uh, related to almost everybody in Wimsfield, <laughs> and we seem to be getting more as, as the further down the line we get. We seem to be getting more relatives. I don't know where they're coming from. Now, where did he learn to play like this? Everyone's impressed with him. He's uh, he's been on the court since he was uh, probably old enough to walk. We used to play a little. Uh, we we play round ball, pick up ball every like every Wednesday night, and we just drag him along and he. Just likes to play. He loves the game. All right, now you were a player in your own right. You played for this Williamsfield team. I don't know how many years ago. How was your experience different from what Travis is doing now? Uh, it was not near as intense when I was playing. It wasn't as much up and down as it was more of a, a set offense type of thing. The only about the only comparison I say is everybody tells me that he's got my hands. I must. I guess I must have had pretty quick hands or something. But well, that's definitely uh, a compliment. We, in terms of the support from Williamsfield, is it always like this? Is just Everyone plus a couple of people came down here. Yeah, since uh, uh, we got into the regional, of course, we weren't supposed to get out of the regional. We weren't supposed to get out of the sectional. We weren't supposed to be here for sure. But we've got fans from Galva, Knoxville, Brimfield, and it just I think every small community is down here rooting for us. What does this compare to? Anything else in recent memory around Williamsville? Well, a lot of people tell me it compares to the 1969 Knox County Tournament. That's what the team that I played on, and that was the first time that Wimsfield had ever won it, and it was like 54 years old at that time, but they don't have it anymore. And uh, after I think after we got uh, out of the sectional and won the super sectional, he says, nah, you know, Knox County Tournament ain't nothing this is, like this. This is bigger, huh? This is definitely bigger. So. All right, Ed, thanks for talking to us. and wish you all the best of luck in the second half with Travis and Williamsfield. We'll take another quick break when we return. Uh, Tom and Dave will have a little bit more. Once again, we're at halftime here at Carver Arena in Peoria. Stay tuned, everybody. Welcome back to Peoria, where Williamsfield leads St. Francis to sales 29 to 26. And, you know, we've talked an awful lot about a kid named Travis Lewis. He's pretty good. Well, Brett Tucker got things going with a three-pointer early. That was given a, a Williamsfield a 5-0 lead early. But Jimmy Mack, who injured his ankle during the first half, did return to action. There you see his quickness as he explodes to the basket. But Travis Lewis, 18 points in the first half. St. Francis de Sales has had to counteract him with some very good defense there. Jarrell Parker goes coast to coast off the steal for the lay-in. But now it's the Travis Lewis show. Travis Lewis inside. Travis Lewis on a fadeaway. Now Travis Lewis coast to coast. Right into your living room. Hang in the air and score it. Troy Endress inside as everyone watches Travis Lewis. There's the pass. Nice job on the stick back. Travis Lewis, how about this one? Look at the ball fake and the finger roll. Now how about Travis Lewis? One on three, explode to the basket and hang in the air. Sean Lampley inside. Ooh. 
We're halftime here in Peoria. 29 to 26 our score. The Bombers of Williamsfield lead St. Francis to Sales. We'll come back, give you some first half stats. Get ready for half number two of the IHSA Class A quarter. Welcome back to Carver Arena here in Peoria. IHSA Class A quarterfinal game number three. Just a second ago, Eric Collins had a chance to check in with Robert Anderson, Williamsfield's head coach. Go ahead, Eric. Thanks, Tom. We're here with the head coach from Williamsfield, Robert Anderson. Robert, if someone had told you before the game that you'd have a three-point lead at halftime, would you be happy, and are you happy now? Well, I'm, I'm, yes, I think we played a pretty good first half, but there was a couple of things defensively. Transition-wise, we didn't get back very well, and we had a trouble with communication as far as guarding the perimeter, and I think we need to correct that. And then offensively, we had a place there about three or four minutes where we didn't score, and we just need to execute better that way. Good luck, Coach, in the second half. Thank you very much. Tom, back to you. Marcus Walthall with the basket, and now Lewis, Travis Lewis, gets it right back in a lot of traffic. He's not afraid to pass it. Good rebound inside and a fake, and I think it'll be a pushing foul on Jimmy Mack. I think you're right on top of that call, Tom. Getting back to Travis Lewis, you're right. He's not afraid to pass it. He is a complete player. He knows that for them to win, he is going to have to score a lot of points, and that's why he averages almost 33 points per ball game. but he also knows they can't continually come down and have him just take bad shots. He has got to have shots within the flow of their offense. It's designed to get him a lot of shots, but he's also got to pass the basketball. That might be on Jimmy Mack. If it is, he's picked up his third. It is. Jimmy Mack picks up his third personal foul, so his second and third come back to back within seconds of each other. And now, Cappy, he's got to be a little more careful. If I was Larry Moore, I might sit him down just for a minute or two just to get him settled down and let him know the situation he's in. You pick up that four, sometimes your game changes. Well, but the other thing is, with that ankle injury, it could be tough to set him down as a foul is called. Travis Lewis goes to the basket, and Cappy, that is a five. That's on Jimmy Mack. He has picked up the fourth. He has. Jimmy Mack has just picked up his fourth personal foul. They tried to get him out and couldn't do it. Well, he reached in, and there's no doubt about the foul. He's got to be more perceptive than that. You don't reach, especially with three fouls, especially when you're guarding the prime time scorer in the state in Travis Lewis. And now that puts a world of pressure on the rest of the St. Francis ball club to step up and take care of the basketball because they lose a, a key component of their offense, Tom. Lewis hits the first. Jimmy Mack picked up three fouls in less than a minute. The other thing is, he has an ankle injury. Did it affect his ability to rotate down and help out defensively, causing him to reach? 20 for Lewis now, and a 31-28 Williams Field lead. Lampley wants it down low. You got to think they want to get it to him. The left-handed jumper won't go. Rebound pulled down by Andrews. Travis Lewis wants the basketball. Three from the right side was partially blocked. Down the floor. Walthall comes up short. And the rebound pulled down by Engel, and he's fouled. Well, the fouls are piling up for St. Francis. St. Francis is a day late right now in terms of their rotation defensively. They are reaching, and it is a team-wide epidemic right now, Tom. Guys have to use their ability, their quickness, and try and establish some defensive position, get down and guard people, rather than standing straight up and reaching all the time. Josh Engel trying to beat the pressure. Tucker finally does. Gets it to Lewis. And now they'll set up their offense. His pass deflected loose on the floor. And they hang on to it. Engel for three. Ring it up, wide open look, all keyed again by ball movement, swinging it to the weak side. And he buried the tray. Lampley with it down low. Nice. 
nice move wouldn't fall the rebound no no basket foul called on Travis Lewis it's come in very limited bunches but when St. Francis has gotten Sean Lampley scoring opportunities on the low post nobody can stop him. There at Travis Lewis, he averages just about 33 points per ball game. He is Williams Field's answer to Michael Jordan. He carries his ball club. Lampley pitches back to Garcia, back to Lampley. Triple team. Garcia tries to answer the three, can't, and the rebound pulled down by Andrews. I really like the job he's done on the glass. He blocks off. He gets good position. Knows he doesn't have a ton of size. And backcourt called. And now I think Williamsfield has got to find an answer for this half court trap because St. Francis has done a nice job right there. Well, the key is you don't cross half court and pick up your dribble. You dribble toward the trap, you back it out, and you reverse the ball and take it up the, the other sideline. In the lane, a foul call. Travis Lewis picks up his third personal foul now. That's big. Two in this quarter. So Jimmy Mack picked up three. Travis Lewis has a couple. Garcia goes inside. Lampley makes the move in the lane, puts it up. No. Traveling call. The problem that St. Francis de Sales is running into right now. There's trying to dump the ball inside. They obviously want to utilize the skills and the size of Sean Lampley, but everyone's standing around watching Sean Lampley try and execute rather than getting him involved within the flow and context of their offense. Marcus Walpole comes back in. Emory Moore will leave. Eric, what do you got? Well, Tom, obviously the whole town of Williamsfield is upset that uh, Travis Lewis has three fouls, but they could take heart. He hasn't fouled out of a game all season long, so that is the good news for the Bombers. Somehow he saved the possession that time. And threw it away. Loose ball. Trying to pick it up. Finally, Garcia does. Pitches it ahead. Walthall inside, and he's fouled. The foul will be called on Brett Tucker. And all of a sudden it seems like Williamsfield is getting out of their momentum a little bit offensively. Well they've stopped running their offense. Everybody's standing around looking for Travis Lewis. He had 18 first half points and they're trying to get him involved offensively. But what they did such a good job at in the first half was attacking the basket and getting Travis Lewis opportunities to score within the flow of their offense. He's got five now. Walt the 35 of 50 from the free throw line for the season. And we've got a four point game. 445 left third quarter. 34 to 30. Williamsfield hanging on to the lead over St. Francis to sales. Four minutes, 45 seconds left, third quarter. Williamsfield leads St. Francis 34 to 30. There's Larry Moore. He is wearing the same shirt and the same tie throughout the state tournament until they lose. He gets it washed and clean, but the same one every game. And there's Jim Kelly. Do you know that throughout the state tournament trip, he will not ride the bus with the team? He drives his own car because it's superstition. <laughs> Jim, they paying your mileage? He said, I don't care. A win would make it all worthwhile as a foul. After the steal, Parker was going to the basket and he's fouled. Josh Engel called for the personal foul. You look back at their 88 team that finished second. The starting five, Tony Michalski's an assistant coach now here at St. Francis. Donald Akins is a barber on the south side of Chicago. Thompson drops it in. We've got a two-point game. 
Eric Anderson's playing professionally after a career in the NBA now in France. John Simmons, another forward, pitched for the Atlanta Braves farm system. And a foul called on the block. Leroy Thompson didn't like the call. Nice with body. play. Still real good hustle yeah. and aggressiveness, which we didn't see out of St. Francis to Sales in the first half. The other starter was Sean McNabb on that ball. Andrews just a 58% free throw shooter bounces the first one off. Tries to split the two can't and the rebound pulled down by St. Francis. They push it ahead to Jarrell Parker. He had a great first half trying to continue that. Missed the shot. Walpole with the rebound couldn't get that Parker inside puts it in. They've just taken over the backboards David. That's where they're winning the game right now. They've made this run because they're exerting their strength inside and looking to attack the offensive glass. Lewis couldn't make it one and done as Garcia takes the outlet pass. Gets it to Parker the runner no good and the rebound pulled down by Andrews. We're tied at 34 three minutes 47 seconds left in the third period and this half court trap has been a problem for Williamsfield Parker had it knocked away and a blocking foul two shots called on Josh Engel. Here's the steal. There's the dribble drive to the basket. There's the hack. No question about the foul. The steal was created though just by lack of taking care of the basketball. It was an unforced error. But you're right, the half court trap has caused a lot of problems for Williamsfield. Parker, 51 of 86 from the line, makes the first as it bounces in. Shooter's row. How does Williamsfield handle this half court pressure now? What do they do in particular to try and get the ball inside and try and get it across without the pressure? Well, the thing that they're doing is they're very tentative bringing the basketball up the floor. You need to take it hard to the trap, but don't give up your dribble. Back it back out and swing the ball, reverse it to the other side of the floor, and then take it up the sideline. Andrus it on top to Tucker to Ingle. Lewis lost it, had it taken away, and then traveling call. Well, I thought when he looked over, he was going to call the foul on Travis Lewis. I did too. There was some bumping going on as the play changed from defense to offense. And that's a tough pass to make when you got two blue shirts who are very much focused on where Travis Lewis is. He may have to step out on the floor and play a more traditional guard role here, Tom, over the last 11 minutes of this ball game, so that he can be more involved and more dominant offensively. Nine to two run the last two minutes and 40 seconds. Lewis penetrates, triple team, put it up. That's not a very good shot, and the rebound pulled down by Walpole. 35 34 St. Francis de Sales with the lead Parker for three back of the rim but the offensive rebound goes to Leroy Thompson inside that time it'll go for Sean Lampley 37 34 Lampley with just four points and a foul called on Marcus Walthall. Robert Anderson up trying to sort his guys on from Williamsfield is here's the last basket. That's a big time athletic move. Williamsfield now facing a full court press. And they do get it across the Much time. Much better line. job. They move the ball side to side. You've got to force the defense to shift or it's going to cause you problems trying to break pressure. Lewis double pumped had it blocked away. Garcia pushes it up the floor. Left side blocked and a foul called. Josh Ingle will pick up the personal foul as he went after that ball. Well, here's the pass inside. But Travis Lewis tries a miraculous 360 spin in the air, but very tough play. And again, 
told you earlier, St. Francis de Sales does as good a job as any team in the Elite Eight in this field at recognizing the change from defense to offense, and they push the ball down the floor, create the foul situation. Walpole with seven points, and now Ingles got to come out. Neil Smith, a 6'1 junior, checks in as Ingles sits down with four personal fouls. Here's Walter. Couldn't get the second one in right there was Neil Smith, so he comes in and gets a rebound right away. Lewis gets it right back. Two blue shirts everywhere he goes. Well, and I think that's going to be the case the rest of the day. This time he puts up a three off right there. Smith with the rebound had it's just flat taken away. What a strong play by Lampley. Garcia pushes it up goes inside blocked from behind blocked again and this time a holding foul will go on Andrew Gibbs. Neil Smith did a real nice job. He was in the right place at the right time on the offensive glass. He waited so long to take the ball back up. Now watch this. There's the rebound. Now he's waiting, waiting. Go up strong before you give Lampley a chance to come over and block your shot. Explode up. Give a good head and shoulder fake. Get him in the air. Create the contact. At the very least, you're going to have a foul situation. Waffle makes the free throw. It's now 39 34. He's got eight points. And 40 to 34. David, before the game, you and I said that as Travis Lewis goes, so goes Williamsfield. Lewis has had a tough second half, not because he's played poorly, but because DeSales has tried to get anybody else involved and said to Lewis, we're going to take you away. Smith with the fake puts it up in the lane couldn't get it rebound very strong by Lampley here comes Parker in the lane hangs and hits 42 34 Williamsfield's going to need a timeout to try and see if they can regroup and a blocking foul will go on Aaron Garcia of St. Francis starting to slip away a bit from Williamsville as you look at Robert Anderson their head coach. I was talking with their principal Jack Emmerich before the game started and I said you know everyone from the whole town is here when you play games everyone goes who protects the town. He said we have a police force but one of their teachers Randy Fritz took it upon himself he'd help patrol the town because everyone's at the games. Lewis hits the first. He's got 21. There's his dad, Ed. <laughs> it's kind of tough to watch, right, Dad? Every once in a while. Found the big spot to celebrate a Billtown win. The Squirrel Cage back in Williamsfield. Parker from 10 hits. He'll try and prevent those fans from celebrating in Williams. Williams field is Travis comes right down the floor and a blocking foul will be called and Travis Lewis will go back to the free throw line. 102 left here in the third quarter. Here's your dribble drive out of Travis Lewis. He knows contacts coming does a real good job. Do you see how he keeps his eyes always right. focused on the basket. He doesn't worry about the contact. He keeps his eyes focused on the prize. That's a guy who's tough mentally. He's focused on his job. Leroy Thompson picks up his third personal. Well, Marcus Walter checks out. Lorenzo Trudeau checks in. He's a 6'5 junior. And Thompson checks out. with the deep knee bend missed the first of two. Coach Robert Anderson says this is what you need to do and we'll see if that answers it for him. Well, I'll tell you I know these guys are in great shape but it is very tough to play on a big floor like this in front of a capacity crowd and not feel tired in this type of environment. 
Very easy to break the press as Moore brings it across the timeline. Less than a minute left in the third quarter. 44 to 37, St. Francis de Sales with the lead over the Bombers of Williamsfield. Lampley kicks it on top. Wendell Ewan. Right sided Parker had a good finish to the first half. Almost threw it away. Nice save. Oh, yeah. Parker just inside the three point strike spins around and finally drops in. He stepped up and had a very good third quarter. Travis Lewis brings it across. 13 seconds, 12 seconds left. Long three. Blowing it up. Lewis. <laughs> and almost picked up the steal. Three seconds, two seconds, one second, blocking foul. And I think the basket is good. We'll wait for the official to say. Count it. Count the basket for Parker. That's range out of Travis Lewis. That is a big time play, but nobody communicates nobody rotates in white you must know who your responsibilities are defensively nobody gets back long baseball pass sets up a three point opportunity for Jarrell Parker you see he's been a big factor this period as his ball club leads it by eight with nine tenths of a second left forty nine to forty now Travis Lewis and that's off to the left. We played three periods here in Peoria. St. Francis de Sales with a strong third quarter. Leads Williamsfield 49 to 40. The fourth quarter's coming up. Welcome back to Peoria. 49 to 40. As we start the fourth quarter, St. Francis de Sales leads Williamsfield in our third quarter final today of the IHSA Class A basketball tournament. St. Francis scored 23 third quarter points. Williamsfield had just 11. Travis Lewis wants it back, gets it back. Having all kinds of problems, puts the shot up. Lewis ends up on the floor. Here comes St. Francis. Moore got it back and put it in. Four on one, very tough to stop. Did a good job at keeping spacing in that transition break opportunity, and they scored it. Travis Lewis inside, put it in. He really does a nice job with low post moves for a guard. He's got 28. They throw it out of bounds and it'll belong to Williamsfield. Off the bench, 23 points, 9 of 14 from the field, and four steals for Jarrell Parker. This is a huge possession for Williamsfield. Got a chance to get it back within arm's reach again. A three from the right side. Good. That's a big time three from Andrew Gibbs. That's huge. Baseline jumper, short. Rebound fought for, pulled down by Neil Smith. The only sub that's played so far for Williamsfield. Lewis picks up his dribble, gets it right back from 14 in the lane. It would not fall, and a rebound foul will go against Williamsfield. That's a shot Travis Lewis will normally make. We'll look at Robert Anderson, the head man of the Williamsfield Bombers. Troy Andrews picks up his second personal foul. Look at the bench point. St. Francis 27, Williamsfield none. The only problem with that whole stat is, though, Neil Smith, as you just said, is the only guy to play 
off of the Williams field bench and he is not a guy that they look to for scoring at all. Here comes Lewis and he'll bring it back out. Sets up from the left side. And that jumper goes in. And all of a sudden, a little contribution. Andrew Gibbs hits the jumper, and it's back to a four point game. And the fans from Williams Field say, Yay! And a kicking violation called. Travis Lewis thought he picked up the basketball, and we got a timeout. Timeout called by St. Francis. Six minutes, 10 seconds left, and a four point ball game here in Peoria. Travis Lewis steps up and makes a great defensive play. There's no kick here. That's all hand on the basketball. The official, though, had a backside look at it and called a kick. Travis Lewis rolls over to I didn't kick it. It was all hand. Six minutes, 10 seconds left. A four point game. St. Francis to Sales on the strength of a very strong third quarter and a run here. Still lead at 51 47. Aaron Garcia goes right side. Walpole gets it back on top to Garcia. Moore goes inside and puts it in. And there just isn't a lot that Williamsfield can do to answer that size. Moore's got eight points. Real nice job out of Moore. He saw just a sliver of daylight and exploded to the basket. Gibbs from 15 in and out. Rebound Smith tapped it. But again, there just isn't a lot they can do. Size does not permit them to rebound with St. Francis. 53 47, five minutes, 20 seconds remain. Garcia looks for the opening. Walfel goes down inside for Lampley to Walfel. On top, Garcia from 16 back of the rim. Smith tapped it and tracks it down. And look at this double team Lewis wherever he goes. And a foul that'll go on Aaron Garcia. He got called for the push. That's his third. There's Emery Moore. Now he's the son of the head coach, Larry Moore. But the interesting thing about Emery Moore, young man who's had to overcome something to be able to be successful here, he's a diabetic and has to deal with his disease. And he steps up and competes at a very high level on a very good basketball team. Hats off to that young man and uh, his, his dad, Larry Moore, the coach. Wonderful coach and an even better person. The first of the one and one would not fall and boy when you're trying to catch up Williamsfield has a tough time missing those. By half you see the field goal percentage Williamsfield down 20 percent in the first half to the second St. Francis down a little but not a lot. Williamsfield tires that they, they really desperately need another body they can use off the bench. Josh Ingle, by the way, has checked back in inside. Easy basket. Nice pass. Leroy Thompson drops it in, and it's 55 47 now. St. Francis with the lead. Another huge trip for Williamsfield. They need a basket here. Gibbs with the ball has been a good force here in the period. Inside Lewis puts it down with a left hand. He got fouled going to the basket. Marcus Walthel picks up the personal foul. There's the entry pass to Travis Lewis. Nice job to catch it. Goes up and just about gets a three point opportunity. The thing that's really wearing Travis Lewis out is not the number of minutes, it's how hard he has to work at the offensive end to fight two and three blue shirts off to control the pass inside. That really gets tiring, very physical. You can see with the free throw, that just wasn't close. 55 48. They've missed a few free throws here in the quarter that can come back to haunt you. 
Moore with it on the right side. Now they're content to slow it down just a little bit. Looks inside, finds Lampley. Left side and a pushing foul will go on Troy Endress. Endress picks up his third personal foul. 342 left and a seven point working margin. Sense of urgency has to set in for Williamsfield. That doesn't mean bad shots the first time you come down, but you really have to work hard at attacking gaps and attacking the basket to score. Walthall with 10 points now makes it 56 to 48. The St. Francis bench gets a little excited thinking maybe they can advance. Oh, great rebound inside. Parker couldn't hang on. Lewis right there to get the second one. Dribbles through the double team, and now he'll bring it out. Inside with a fake and a foul called on Marcus Walthall. And going down very hard was Leroy Thompson. Thompson really went down hard. There's Travis Lewis. Real nice no look pass inside. There's your contact, and he comes down and whacks his head. Ouch. That is scary. That stuns you. They'll help him up. Get another look from a low angle. Look at that no look pass. Nice catch. A lot of contact and wow. Ouch. That is laying it on the line. They got to clean up the floor a little bit underneath the basket. He's got a heck of a cut there too. Oh, he does. Andrew Gibbs will go to the free throw line. 63 and 90 from the. Charity stripe on the season is 70 percenter. With free throws, his team has got to start getting. He's got eight points now. He'll make both of those in full court pressure put on now by Williams Field or Billtown, as they call themselves. St. Francis very happy to play a little catch. They lead it by six. Parker's been a big story in this game. Nice easy pass inside and Sean Lampley there for the slam. Lampley with six points. And it's an eight point ball game. Fake of the three. Lewis. Goes to the wing, down to the corner, gets it back, tries to fake, come underneath, kicks it out on top. For three, partially blocked. It's tapped, loose, and a foul will be called on Andrew Gibbs. They'll call him for the push. Well, St. Francis de Sales is not a great free throw shooting team as a whole. They're going to have to go down and knock down some big time free throws. If they do, they can put this game away very quickly. They have an eight point working margin going to the line to shoot a couple. Is Sean Lampley. Williamsfield is going to have to clean up any missed shot. They cannot afford a lapse on the defensive glass, and they're going to have to do a better job. That last sequence illustrated when you have an open look, you've got to be ready to catch and shoot. You can't take too long to release the basketball, Tom, or you allow a very quick defensive team 
to rotate over and get a hand up on your shot. Still working on Leroy Thompson. Sean Lampley, 26 of 41 now on the season after that miss from the free throw line. Makes it a nine point game with just over two minutes and 30 seconds left. Lewis brings it behind his back and up the floor. Nice move inside, but again, they can't finish off. And the rebound pulled down by Lampley. And St. Francis trying to salt away a victory here. Lampley, strong move inside and a jump ball. Alternate possession will go to St. Francis. And bodies are flying. Well, Williamsfield is just running on fumes right now. Their gas tank is about empty. They are showing a very gutty performance. Sean Lampley inside. A lot of contact. And we got a timeout. 204 left. St. Francis de Sales leads at 59 to 50 over Williamsfield. We'll take a break with them. Anderson talking to his team about exactly what he wants to have done. 3 8. You can't get anything. You guys outside. 29 points so far in the ballgame. Let's go. Come on. Hey, still time. Eric, what do you got? Well, it's just over uh, by the bench uh, for St. Francis to sales. Le Leroy Thompson, he just got a nasty cut on the top of his head. It's kind of a gash, but it's all bandaged up. Uh, he could be back in the game. He's all ready to go. I'm just probably sure he's going to have a headache tomorrow. But he's okay. Never lost consciousness. None of that kind of stuff. Tom? You mentioned that Travis Lewis has 29. He had 18 in the first half, just 11 here in the second half. So two things, I think, running out of gas a little bit, but also I think St. Francis has done a, a much better job of guarding him and trying to make sure that he doesn't get the opportunities that he got in the first half. And I think a lot of that is they've done a good job getting down the floor in transition where he got some very easy layups because he pushed the tempo and attacked the basket in the first half. St. Francis content to just shoot layups and move the basketball around. What they do. And a blocking foul, I think, on Troy Andrus. Yep, that's the case. And Andrus has picked up his fourth. Marcus Walther will go to the line. He is a 69% free throw shooter. 34 of 49, the numbers for that. It's a nine point ball game, 59 to 50, with a minute 39 left. Well, that free throws, Cappy, can really come back and bite you. It may not in this game, but as they move on in this tournament, in this championship round, can be a problem. 11 points now for Walton. 60 to 50. Down to the baseline, that's Endress. They dare him to shoot it. Inside reverse layup is up, no good. Rebound again, pulled down by Sean Lampley. Push it up the floor. Parker with it with a minute 17 left. Good pass out of the double team. Quick move down low, shot goes up. The second shot is good. Emery Moore there for the rebound and the putback. And it's 62 to 50 now. Moore with 10 points in a 12 point ball game with just under a minute left. Lewis double pumps, couldn't get it, and a foul called on the rebound. Aaron Garcia called for the personal foul. All right, there's Larry Moore. Now we've told you, their staff told us he's worn the same shirt and tie for every round of the state run. Right. Well, where is he going to find an overnight cleaners to get ready for tomorrow? And if he's fortunate enough to get right. in the finals, who cleans it between, let's say, noon or 1 o'clock and the championship game? Of course, either way, if you play tomorrow, you play again tomorrow. Right. Because you've got the third place game. 
I would say if there's an enterprising cleaner in Peoria who's watching the game, keep the shop open. You've got a coach who needs to get his shirt and tie clean. Garcia steps out of bounds and our player of the game today brought to you by Wendy's is Jarrell Parker the 6 1 sophomore has put up great numbers 23 points 9 of 16 from the field and four steals all off the bench Lewis double pumps and look at Lampley just sitting there waiting to pick him off inside the layup goes in count that one for Marcus Walco he's got 13 points now and St. Francis de Sales is on their way to the semifinals. Lewis double pumps, put it up, came up short. Rebound, put back, blocked away by Lampley. Garcia tried to save it, couldn't do it. Baseline jumper from the right side, curls in right wing for Troy Endress, and a timeout called by Williamsfield. Endress with nine points now, and 19.8 seconds left. And a standing ovation from the Williamsfield crowd and also from the St. Francis crowd. For a little different reason, I think, David. St. Francis pretty well celebrating the victory. And you may see some long faces over there on the Williamsfield side, but I think they're fans that realize their team has had a tremendous season. Well, this is a community of just 600 people, a school with 97 students. There you get a look at Robert Anderson, their outstanding coach who's just had a great year. They'll close it out, it appears, at 28 and 3. But take your hat off to the whole community. They rallied behind this ball club. And what a great story to get down here, downstate, and play on this type of stage. And Cappy, to all those fans who are at the firehouse watching from Williamsfield, be proud of your ball club. You can still go over to the squirrel cage or Neighbors tap your two spots out there in Williamsfield and celebrate a great, great run for the Williamsfield Bombers. Congratulations. You may not be playing for the big prize, the state championship, but they're already champions. They've done a great job. A lot of teams would give their eye teeth just to make it here, and it's pretty hard to take when you're on the losing end or what looks like the losing end. With 19.8 seconds left, it would take uh, it would take quite a run, but Again, our congratulations to all the teams who have made it this far. And a foul immediately. Josh Ingle has fouled out of the ball game. The 5'9 senior has played his last minutes for Williamsfield. Ovation from the crowd. Jarrell Parker will go to the free throw line. Guy that we've already said was our most valuable player pick. He came off the bench when this ball club needed a lift in the first half and provided it. He's got 23 points. You can see the bench. Pretty disappointed for the Bombers of Williamsfield. Second one goes in. 24 for Parker. Here comes Lewis. Stops from near the three point stripe, put it up, couldn't get it, and that's been the story of the second half. Moore with the rebound, gets it out, looking for Parker, it's over his head. Sixty five fifty three six point eight seconds left. Travis Lewis as should be the case takes the last shot. It's no good and that will do it. Well David at halftime Cappy David had the slingshot out and the rock in it but Goliath grabbed it away and broke it off Chicago St. Francis. The Pioneers now 16 and 14 on the season advance here in the quarterfinals of the IHSA Class A tournament. 
Larry Moore's team played well in the second half and got the job done. Larry Moore's team really kept their composure. Many teams at the half may have looked and said, we're down at the half in a game they thought they had more talent and should be leading throughout. Uh, take your head off, as we said, to Williamsfield, but a real solid job by Larry Moore and his coaching staff to keep his guys focused, made adjustments as he said they would at the half to handle Travis Lewis. They did a better job defensively. They also dominated three feet from the basket, and they will play tomorrow. Let's take a look at our Pepsi play of the game. Inside pass to Sean Lampley. Go up and flush it, big fella. Eric is standing by with a winning coach. Go ahead, partner. Uh, thanks, Tom. Larry Moore, congratulations are in order. It doesn't look like your team is celebrating too much. I uh, know. Well, like I said, we have some unfinished business. We didn't play well in the first half. I told the kids at halftime we have to make some adjustments. We have to play harder, get out to the shooters better, take that uh, middle away from them, and we did that. And uh, once we got the lead, we were in good shape. Can you talk about the health of your team? I know you have a sore throat, you have a sore ankle now, and now it looks like you got a sore head too with Leroy Thompson. Well, you know, we're banged up, but at this, you know, we have a couple games left. Uh, we just got to suck it up, and, and we just got to get going here, and uh, hopefully, you know, with, with a half a day's rest tomorrow, we can uh, come back strong. All right, now there's rumor going around. You're speaking of strong. There's a rumor going around that you're not changing your shirts at all. Tomorrow, and you're going to be playing two games. What's going to happen here? Well, my wife is going to put it in the cleaners in the uh, morning, so I'll have it back uh, for, the, for the night game, hopefully. All right, well, I look forward to talking to you tomorrow then. Oh, and you'll be worthwhile coming to us too. All right. Hey, Tommy, back to you. Thanks, Eric. We'll see how he does. Without that lucky shirt, it sounds like, for the first game, as you say, if there's an enterprising cleaner in town, you may find that ball club and say, hey, I'll take care of your shirt, Coach. Coach Moore, I know you can't hear me right now, but you're going to be breaking down tape later. Don't take the shirt to the cleaners. <laughs> You're on a big run. Go buy yourself an iron at a 24-hour store and do it yourself. Keep the lucky shirt. 65-53, the final score. St. Francis to Sales survives and advances as they defeat the Bombers of Wing Williamsfield. Again, 65-53. Lots more coming up as our coverage continues here on Sports Channel. Welcome back and again our congratulations to St. Francis de Sales as they advance and uh, David it looked like in the first half that Williamsfield really had a chance but boy all of a sudden St. Francis did a great job and got after it in that third quarter made a big run and outscored them 23 to 11 that was the difference in the game right they got great play off the bench their bench dominated the, the play today but the key was in the second half Tom, defensively. St. Francis de Sales made some adjustments. They made it tougher for Travis Lewis to catch the ball and initiate things offensively. They extended their defense, and they just wore down a very gutty team from Williamsfield. I think you make a good point. They were a much deeper team, and Parker off the bench was outstanding, and Williamsfield just didn't have that kind of an advantage and uh, wore them down. And I think the other thing that really helped them was their half-court pressure. That half-court trap made a big difference. Right, it was something different Williamsfield hadn't seen this year. It's not something you practice against every day, and it really wore down the Bombers as they tried to mentally attack it and physically attack it. And that can really wear you down. All right, partner, we have had three games today in the IHSA Class A semi or quarterfinals. Game number four is coming up, but in game three, it was St. Francis de Sales prevailing 65 to 53 over Williamsfield. We got lots more coming up. Stick around. Welcome back to Carver Arena. We're in between quarterfinal games. Game number four is coming up in just a couple of minutes. But now we're delighted to be joined by David Fry. He is the executive director of the IHSA. David, this has got to be one of your favorite weekends all year. Well, it absolutely is. You get the excitement, the band's going, kids are running around. You have to yell when you talk to uh, interviewers and all that kind of thing. It's a marvelous time. Can you talk to me about Peoria? I know it's been in Champaign. This Final Four has been in Champaign for years and years and years. I should say Elite Eight. For the past two seasons, it's been here in Peoria. In your eyes, how's that been? It's been a marvelous time for us. Champaign was wonderful. But Peoria has added a new atmosphere. The, the community volunteers, the local support, 
One of the greatest things that I've enjoyed is watching the teams all stay together in the same hotel. The kids socialize and interact with one another. It's really been tremendous to see. Have you had a chance to go over just in the same very building right here and go to the uh, the March Madness, all the exhibits they have? I've spent probably more time there today than I have here in the arena. That is an absolutely extraordinary time. And if you can't get a ticket to the game, you can have a whole lot of fun over there for two bucks for all day. We've got virtual reality basketball, slam dunking contests. I even dunked the ball today. Uh, how low oh, yeah, was the rim? They, they made it low enough so that I didn't have to jump. But, you know, <laughs> you get the feel for it. We've got merchandise. We've got demonstrations. We had a wheelchair basketball game going on over there. They've got a new thing where they, they strap a bungee cord to your back. And you, you run down a path and try to slam dunk a ball, but you can't get there because the cord jerks you back. It's hilarious. It's really fun stuff. That normally happens to me when I'm playing basketball. I don't even need a bungee there. I just can't do it anymore. We've got a lot for younger children as well. And the corporate sponsors that have come together to put that event on have done a marvelous job. It is really fun. All right, David, this is the question I want to ask you. I want to pick your brain. Now, you've been with the IHSA for 30 years. You've been executive director for the past six. Obviously, you have some favorite memories, favorite teams of the Basketball Elite Eight. Probably my fa one of my favorite teams is the Ridgeway team that won the first Class A tournament. A small school, just like Williamsville, we just saw. And they had a tremendous kid. They had a boy by the name of Brett Browning, I think, was their star player. Uh, the Quincy teams with the Douglas brothers and Michael Payne. Certainly Thorn Ridge with uh, Quinn Buckner. Buckner. Uh, just some marvelous, marvelous players over the years. Now, I saw the head coach. Is it Rob Ferguson for uh, Thornwood? He's in the stands here today. That kind of says something for this tournament. That was Ron 25 is, years ago. Ron is the athletic director at Bradley University, and he comes, has come every year, all the years of, that I've been around. He really supports it. Now, he's not just here because Bradley's in Peoria, and it's no, just right down the street. He's here because he'd be here wherever we were. So, all right. David Fry, wonderful talking to you. You know, obviously, we look forward to seeing more and more wonderful things these Elite Eight as the years go by. Is it going to stay here in Peoria, I guess? Well, we're here this year, and obviously, and we're here next year for sure, and then we're not quite sure where it'll happen after that, but it's going to be tough for it to go anywhere else. Peoria's built a tremendous tradition in just two short years. Now, it seems like the people in Peoria really love it here. They absolutely do, and folks who come here find that it is every bit as good as people have said it is. All right, well, David Fry, thank you for talking to us. We look forward to talking to you in years to come and more wonderful Elite Eight basketball action. But coming up next, folks, we have the final quarter, final game of the afternoon, actually the early evening. Uh, coming up in just a couple of moments, it'll be, uh, no, uh, it'll be uh, game four. In just a couple of moments, of course, we will have Dave Kaplan and Tom Doerr to wrap things up one more time. Folks, stay tuned to Sports Channel.